Alright guys, today is going to be a small con comic book haul. So, went to a small show, picked up some books. I'm going to show them to you. <laughs> uh, also, I got a trade paperback from all these. And if uh, time permitting, I'll show some of the stuff I got last week, this week. I know that's what everybody comes here to see all last week's issues this week. <laughs> Uh, of course, before we get to that, we're going to do our two from the tomb. So I've been talking about it for the past few weeks, but I've been scanning stuff into CLZ, the app that uh, basically organizes your collections or collection. Uh, after I purchased a double of a, <laughs> a Walking Dead issue, I decided to... Uh, spend that $15 a year <laughs> and keep my stuff organized uh, with so many distractions going on it's hard for me and uh, of course if I like it I'm going to pick it up you know it just so happens I already picked it up like 4 or 5 years ago But uh, so as I was scanning I came across my uh, prestige format and of course I'm not going to talk about the uh, killing joke Basically, going to talk about the story about me buying this issue. And this is a fifth printing. I've owned many. Uh, I've owned the first print. I've owned, I think, fourth and sixth prints also. I've traded them, traded them away through the years, but I've always kept my fifth print, the one I bought off the shelf. It was basically my uh, introduction to start going to comic shops. And I believe I picked this up in either 88 or 89. Uh, my buddy uh, came to school and he brought a copy of uh, The Dark Knight Returns, the uh, issue four. And I remember just like, just thumbing through it. And I came across this page and it made me want to like, okay, where'd you get this from? You know, I never saw it on the newsstand because I was a newsstand buyer. I was going to, uh, those from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, I was going to page three in Bloomfield. For those not from the area, Bloomfield's like, what you would consider like a little Italy of uh, any town across the United States. Um, but they had like uh, a newsstand where they played the uh, lottery and stuff like that. And, uh, sold uh, candy, cigarettes, all that kind of stuff. And they had like a huge magazine collect or, uh, selection. But uh, yeah, definitely... Uh, just turned me on to that, so, but it's not about this book, it's about this one. I ended up going for The Dark Knight Returns, and it so happened to be on the, the shelf, and I was like, I saw this cover, and I was just like, then I ended up flipping through it a little bit, and I was like, yeah, this is me. <laughs> uh, I'm moving up to the big leagues now, you know, <laughs> and I, uh, I highly recommend, if you don't own this book, you definitely get need a copy of it, uh, doesn't matter what printing the only thing i will say is uh i'm gonna show this too this is in book two of the two for the tomb <laughs> but this is the uh the deluxe edition and i picked this up a few years ago i think i paid eight bucks for it and i figured oh, i'll just have it because i haven't looked at this in i want to say like 15 16 years since that when i scanned it in yesterday i mean i might have looked at it in passing but i never i haven't didn't open it up and read it you know it's, it's in a bag and a board i just don't have it in one right now plus i had this thing right here and i'm telling you what i was like looking through this so as you can see brian bulland did the uh the artwork in this the, the story the killing joke but in this version he does the coloring also and to me get to the same page here the coloring in this the uh the, the prestige format the uh the original we'll call it the fifth print is so much better i mean you can just tell by like the colors added to the story it uh in my opinion this is the copy you need to get i mean it just it grabs you in 
this is so plain it's so flat i think is the word i'm looking for you can just tell like the yellows are like really highlighted in this and it brings it out it brings it the mood to the story where this is just like okay this is just looks like just any other story let's see we'll go to another page here here classic page right there where he finds out trying to figure out who the joker is let's see if i can find it real quick on this one there we go just seems so flat to me where this is like brings it out so um my opinion definitely get this i'm curious what your guys opinions of this i mean granted my phone isn't the greatest uh not like have it in front of you or anything like that but uh just curious what you guys think um john higgins did the coloring for the uh the original and then bullen did it for the deluxe edition see here where's my other there it is so the other two for the tomb books it's gonna be another prestige but i think that was just a dc thing uh, they started calling them square bounds or something like that uh it's the Pun ghost rider punisher wolverine let's read it again ghost rider <laughs> wolverine punisher uh the hearts of darkness uh this just brought a lot of good memories too uh first of all this is a cover that folds open Some of that 90s goodness that everybody cries about nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the the three here going up against Blackheart. I really enjoyed this story. Um, you can see who wrote it, Howard Mackey, which is a very he's a very good Punisher writer. So if you're ever looking for books of the Punisher. Um, this is something you probably should be able to find in a dollar bin. Short story is uh, these guys, Wolverine, Punisher, and uh, Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch, the real Ghost Rider, as far as I'm concerned. I can't read any other ones. Uh, I'll get uh, letters sent to them. <laughs> so, you know, it's the 90s, you know. Didn't get an email or a tweet <laughs> uh, from Blackheart trying to get um, the three to go against Mephisto, his dad. And it just goes through it, but I always just remember this one scene, like, uh, it really sold me on this book, and it it's, leads to the little bit of the tension. There's Frank, uh, Frank Castle with the, uh, Vincent Price mustache. But I remember just reading this, and, uh, Danny Ketch is basically coming to, like, a bed and breakfast, uh, where... Uh, little girl and uh, her mother run it and uh Danny Ketch comes into there and uh to sit, come down to eat get something to eat and guess who's sitting there already <laughs> and you can just tell like it, it just felt, it felt like uh you can just see like the tension building in this story but I recommend this also uh if you get a chance it's still I, I enjoyed it I just reread it again um and like I said you should be able to find this in the cheap bins it's one of them stories that were just overprinted. All right. Now that that went on for like 20 minutes. Let's see. What are we at here? Yeah, we're about eight minutes in. <laughs> so the first book I picked up wasn't at the con. It was actually uh, at another store. And they were selling them for a quarter. So I picked this up. I already owned this. So CLZ didn't fail me this time. But uh this is, I love Alpha. She's one of my favorite characters in the Walking Dead universe. And I uh, figured if I ever get to meet Robert Kirkman or Charlie Adlar, this would be the book I want to get signed. So that's the only reason why I picked it up for a quarter. Uh, got some dollar books too. Anytime I see like any 12 centers for a dollar, as long as they have um, some sort of superhero or horror related, I'll pick them up. And this is House of Mystery issue 153 with the Martian Manhunter on the cover there. This one was also a dollar. I thought uh, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> I'll put it right there, so give it the attention it deserves. Of course, this is the House of Mystery, issue 208. It says, closed 
no one dies today. It's very Halloween. <laughs> yeah, anytime I can pick up House of Mysteries, um, any of those books for a dollar, I'm buying them. Doesn't matter what condition they're in, as long as they have like the cover intact. Uh, next up, I picked up a uh, Green Lantern for my Green Lantern collection. I need this book. I was so happy to look at my app and see I actually needed this book. It's a uh, Green Lantern 54. With a cover, of course, by the, the great Gil Kane. Just awesome, man. <laughs> for a dollar. Uh, also picked up this bad boy here. For a dollar. I've been trying to put this little run together to like an eight issue run before it turns into um oh I think it's where monsters dwell. I'm not hundred percent sure, don't quote me on that one. But this is where creatures roam, issue number three. Of course it reprints the, uh some of the tales to astonish early issues. I believe it's a Jack Kirby cover, yeah. <laughs> Not too bad for a buck a piece. Also, anytime I pick this up, or anytime I find this, it was like uh, half off. So I paid two bucks for it. I think I got three of these issues now, the facsimile. Uh, one of them I'm going to get eventually get signed by Neil Adams. Uh, he should be making the rounds pretty soon. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, I try to piece together is the characters that I like. Like, I like Conan. So I picked up uh, What If Conan the Barbarian Walked the Earth Today. Ended up picking this up for $3. Picking up uh, Lady Death Merciless Onslaught. It's a uh, regular $8 for so I figured out. Eh. And I needed to buy three of them to get the, uh, I think they were three for five or three for seven, I can't remember. Or they were like five dollars each or something like that. Got a good deal, so. Yeah, Brian Polito. It's the standard edition for those keeping the track at home. Also pick this up. And anytime I see anything with the great late Darwin Cook, I'm definitely picking it up. Of course, this is the Looney Tunes variant. Um, Catwoman issue 46 with the uh, Tweety Bird. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm a huge Darwin Cook, Darwin Cook fan. Love the first four issues of Catwoman. I believe it's the series before this. Um, I want to say it's volume three, maybe four. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I want to say it's volume three. But, uh, yeah, the Darwin Cook cover, man. <laughs> uh, the last issue I bought to get that deal, I ended up picking up a uh, Black Cat issue one. Of course, this is a cover buy. I'm not a huge, uh, people that watch this channel, I don't really buy a whole lot of Marvel unless it deals with certain subjects like, uh, you know, Conan, the Ghost Rider, stuff like that. I like a lot of their edgier stuff, um. Like the Punisher, Daredevil, and stuff like that. But uh, I won't probably ever pick up anything else. You know, not I like the Immortal Hulk from them. I like some of the Thor stuff. But this is just a cover buy for the uh, the Art Germ cover. And I'm a huge Art Germ fan. So, but I'm getting a little tired of buying stuff for the cover. I'm not. And I got like a ton of Art Germ stuff. <laughs> Like some of his Supergirl stuff. So I might have to go back and reread it. Because. Uh, I don't know. I just don't feel. Like it's worth having in my collection. If I'm not going to read it. You know. It sure looks nice and stuff. I, I'm sure I maybe can put it on a shelf. Or something like that. And just display it. But uh, yeah. I just bought that for the art germ cover. So anybody read this at all. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. So the big book I bought was for 15 bucks <laughs> i went all out you know i think i spent a total spent a total of uh 30 bucks 
that was uh, getting, uh, I got a shirt too, so. <laughs> but I ended up picking up uh, the real Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch. <laughs> um, I ended up picking this up because it was a new stand copy. I already have the uh, the direct version, but I figured I might as well pick this up now because um, it was pretty pretty reasonable. I thought fifteen dollars was a pretty decent price for this. I'm still looking for the second printing. Um, it's a little bit harder to find, but I'm a huge Ghost Rider fan, especially of this era. Um, it's one of those books that uh, you know. I learned to, you know, collect. I started collecting a full run at that time. You know, most of the stuff I started collecting was already either 20 issues in or, um, you know, it's been going on for decades. This was one of the first series that, okay, around my time, this came out. <laughs> and it was a good book, too. You know, it wasn't a uh, junk. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, uh, just remember seeing this cover and just thinking, beautiful you know and I didn't, I didn't get it off the shelf when it came out on this release date i ended up buying it months later then back in the 90s at that time stuff was going up like it sort of is like now like uh just out of nowhere i mean then all of a sudden like this character was in every single freaking book you could think of uh there'll be some like issues where he just like drive right through <laughs> and he just claim as a guest appearance <laughs> Next up, uh, so that was my con haul. <laughs> yeah, I got some time to show some other stuff here. Uh, ended up going to Ollie's. I was going there every couple weeks to make sure um, nothing else is brand new that new there that I would pick up. And there's a ton of Marvel, a ton of DC stuff from the Rebirth. I'm still looking for volume two of Batman from New 52 because I got the first volume, but. Uh, I always keep an eye out for Hellblazer stuff, and I end up finding uh, Hellblazer. This is Volume 7, and I click Hellblazer in the trade. I only got a few of the trades, so I probably won't be able to read this one for a while, because I'm trying to read them in order. Um, so I got like, the first two, then I got like four, so I'm, I'm getting there. But for this price, I figured I'll just stock it away. But um, Steve Dillon does the art in here. Uh, this is probably when he was at his best. Um, but yeah, it's Hellblazer. You can see the back. That's a regular uh, $20 price tag on there. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. I'll just go through the stuff that was on my pull list and I picked up off the shelf last week. Uh, Batman... Issue 115, I'm going to be quite honest with you guys, ever since uh, issue 112, I think it was, when uh, James Tinian um, came out with that he was leaving the title, it sort of like took the wind out of my sails for this, uh, this series. I mean, I'm still enjoying it, but it's like, okay, he's only got two more issues left, you know. But, uh. Yeah, I, I like this, the design of the scarecrow. Let me see who was in here. Where did he, I think there you go. Yeah, I dig that. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's got the futuristic, of course. Yeah, fear state. <laughs> uh, what else came in here? Oh yeah, Lucio Perello <laughs> got the Red Sonia cover. This is my uh, McKinley puts on his uh, channel. What, what uh, cover did we think was the best of the week? I put this one down this week. I just think this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got a knife. Yeah. <laughs> got the tongue bleeding out everywhere, man. Like, uh, As far as the inside goes, I really didn't care for too many of these stories. I thought they were okay. You know, I read it because I'm trying to not to do the, uh, as I said, buy them for covers. But this was a straight up cover buy when I bought it. So I think with just this and Black Hat, I was like, okay, man, do I really need these? I mean, if I really like pictures that much, I, you know, maybe wait, wait for the art book to come out or something like that. But, but I thought this, uh, the artwork in this interior right here, the second story, I thought that was really good. Uh, 
Uh, what else? Heard uh, some shops didn't get their uh, gunslinger in and uh, king spawn in because of um, the paper shortage or something like that. Uh, Tom McFarlane was on his Facebook and he was uh, sort of got blindsided, but he had no idea. He only found out that day that they were uh, not sending all the books. So he was a little ticked off to need to say, I think this is the only one that made it out. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like every, on Instagram and stuff, the people that did get this, like a lot of shops didn't get them because they were waiting till next week. I guess they're going to send them all at the same time. And I guess, you know, depending on where you live, maybe it was like, uh, since I live closer on the, um, on the East Coast, that the uh, people on the West part of the country uh they didn't make it out they stopped shipping and stuff like that so yeah, i think it was for both of the the spawns that came out this week but i ended up picking them with boiling cover i'm really digging this uh king spawn uh, gunslinger was good too i like the first story in it um gunslinger in modern modern times uh i think what brett booth does the artwork in it and stuff like that so But yeah, this is a, uh, and for usually the first issue is like five ninety nine, which is like, eh, it's a little hot, a little pricey. Let's be honest here. But then uh, the second issue, third issue, or the two ninety nine, and you can't go wrong with two ninety nine, spawn book. You know, uh, definitely uh, pick them up if you can. Uh, I'm sure a lot of shops ordered the first couple issues heavily, so you might be able to get them in discount bins. And lastly, but sure as hell not, <laughs> uh, Veronica Revenge came out this past week. I thought it was going to come out at the beginning of October, but um, of course you got the, the great Simon Bisley doing the cover on here with Pump Kill. <laughs> yeah, this is murder. Uh, if you're under the age of 18, you might want to tune out real quick or whatever. <laughs> But yeah, it's just a traditional uh, Verotic comic. Um, it's two stories in there. Um, both good. I'm a Glenn Danzig fan. I'm a huge Verotic fan. So take it at your own risk. Uh, buying the stuff. It's, uh, it's quite brutal. As you probably saw as I was flipping through the pages real quick. You just got, you know suggestive scenes <laughs> um, but I'm a huge fan of uh, this kind of comic and stuff like that so this is right up my alley so definitely uh, there's the fan club I might, I'm thinking about ordering them I'm thinking, I think I read somewhere um, Verotic the comic company is having some issues with PayPal I think they're uh they can only go through eBay or something like that. So if you want these covers and stuff like that, you have to like, if you want to, don't want to go through eBay, you have to send them like a money order, which I'm thinking about doing because it's old school way, you know. <laughs> I guess it's uh, pay, for PayPal, it's too risque, you know. But yeah, I just love that cover, that uh, Simon Bisley cover. And you should check it out, you know, just for, uh, <laughs> all right guys uh just so i can keep uh you know getting issues every couple every i think they come out quarterly or something like that <clears throat> just so i can keep getting the uh <laughs> getting them delivered <laughs> uh programming note uh this saturday devil's night i'm gonna have a uh, five comics I'm going to pick my top five Halloween comics in my collection, and I'm going to show the, just the covers and stuff like that. So it'll be a short video, so, but uh, just in time for Devil's Night, you know, Halloween's Eve. Uh, make sure you uh, check it out. Uh, also, check out the um, channels down below. Um, probably add a uh, triple six on there. Uh, I was watching a couple of his videos last night. Uh, that dude got some great content, so definitely check out that channel. I'll leave a link down to his channel. I was really enjoying it. Sub him up. He's a 
his videos are really good. So definitely uh, sub him 